Hi, welcome along to another video. Going to go through this um, letter from the NHS from April 2020 that is uh, allegedly from my doctor and it's probably best to start with just reading the letter. As you can see it starts with important, personal, it's got the NHS logo, it's got my NHS number and with the start point of important advice to keep you safe from coronavirus. Your safety and the continued provision of the care and treatment you need is a priority for the NHS. This letter gives you advice on how to protect yourself and access the care and treatment you need. As you can see in bold, very important then. The NHS has identified you, or the named person you care for, as someone at risk of severe illness if you catch coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. This is because you have an underlying disease or health condition that means if you catch the virus, you are more likely to be admitted to hospital than others. The safest course of action is for you to stay at home at all times and avoid all face-to-face -face contact for up to 12 weeks in the first instance, subject to government review. This will help protect you by stopping you from coming into contact with the virus. The exception is carers and healthcare workers who you must see as part of your medical care. If you are in touch with friends, family or a support network in your community who can support you to get food and medicine, follow the, follow the advice in this letter. The government is supporting those at highest clinical risk in need of essential supplies. Please go to www blah 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 to register your current situation even if you do not need additional help right now. If you cannot sign up to the website you can call the government dedicated helpline. If at any point you think you have developed symptoms of coronavirus such as new continuous cough or high temperature seek clinical advice using the NHS 111 online coronavirus do this as soon as you get symptoms so as you can imagine receiving this letter from the from my doctor on nhs paperwork um i took this seriously i questioned it very seriously as well as to what this was based on but in the first instance rather than take a chance uh, i keep an open mind to everything maybe things are maybe things aren't so it, i took action to start Im implementing the changes I would need to make instantly, absolutely instantly. I started communicating with people saying, I've got this letter, I'm gonna need support in getting shopping, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm not allowed out, literally. <laughs> I've had a letter saying I'm on a list, don't go out for three months. Whilst questioning this of what it was based on, I really couldn't come up with anything except for something that happened in 2005, 15 years ago. Um, based on that, thing like, yeah, okay, maybe I am at risk then. But really, I would have been more at risk at the thing from 2005 <laughs> over the last 15 years than coronavirus over the last sort of five weeks. So if we go into, uh, a bit deeper into the letter with the advice, you or the person you care for should strictly avoid contact with someone who is displaying symptoms of coronavirus. These symptoms include high temperature and or a new and continuous cough. Not leave your home. You must not leave your home. You must not leave your home. You must not attend any gatherings. This includes gatherings of friends and families in private spaces, e.g. family homes, weddings and religious services. You must not go out for shopping, leisure or travel. When arranging food or medication deliveries, these should be left at the door to minimise contact. Keep, you must keep in touch using remote technology such as the phone, internet and social media. You must use telephone or online services to contact your GP or other essential services. You must regularly wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. Ask carers or support workers who visit your home to do the same. The rest of your household should support you to stay safe and stringently follow guidance on social distancing, reducing their contact outside the home in your home. You should minimise your time with others in shared spaces, you should aim to keep two metres apart, away from others and encourage them to sleep in a different bed where possible use separate towels and if possible use a separate bathroom from the rest of the household or clean the bathroom after every use. 
separate bar from, honestly. <laughs> 21st century Britain, really? I don't even think the middle classes have a separate bathroom anymore. <laughs> I think everyone's in the one nowadays. Avoid using the kitchen, uh, back to the letter, sorry. Avoid using the kitchen when others are present. Take your meals back to your room to eat where possible and ensure all kitchenware is cleaned thoroughly. If the rest of your household are able to follow this guidance, there is no need for them to take the full protective measures to keep you safe. You will still get the medical care you need during this period. We are considering alternative options for managing your care and we will be in touch if any changes are needed. Your hospital care team will be doing the same. We also advise that, we'll skip that, we'll skip that, care, we'll skip the carers, we'll skip the medicines, all the planned stuff, all the common sense stuff, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll skip the how to keep your mental health bit up as well <laughs> too many things uh no let's skip that as well too much honesty so as you can see at the end there obviously i've had to block it out it says yours sincerely and the name there is my doctor's and the phone number is my doctor's surgery so when we get to the list of diseases and conditions considered to be very high risk we hit the cancer thing and that's the thing from 2005 skin cancer quite a nasty one but nevertheless so after a rather chaotic um friday and saturday we saw this article in the newspaper on the sunday about the uk giving incorrect information on self-isolation say gps doctors say some patients receive letters wrongly saying they are in a high risk group the envelope they're shown in this picture it's nothing like the envelope that the letters were sent out in. That clearly says UK government. A UK government letter containing an update about coronavirus. This picture is completely irrelevant. Separate thing. That's the government update letter, not the NHS letter that these, this article is going to talk about. So just to read a bit from this then, uh, people across the UK are being given incorrect information from the government about whether or not to isolate. With some wrongly instructed to remain indoors for 12 weeks, GPs have warned. Doctors fear out of date information is being used as they are getting an increasing number of calls from people who do not understand why they have received a text or letter saying they are in the most at risk group. At the same time, some of those who are in priority groups are complaining they have been given no information, they said. The list of who to contact, which would normally take weeks to do, was compiled in 48 hours and given the huge undertaking, errors are likely to have crept in. Last month, the government announced it would contact 1.5 million people by the 29th of March to tell them that they should be shielding which means they are most at risk to the virus and should, should stay indoors for 12 weeks. Remember my letter was dated April 2020. Dr Francesca Silman, a London GP, said, Unfortunately, a number of people I know did not receive letters despite fitting in the shielding category. Some only received letters in the past few days and others have received letters even though they don't actually need to shield. She added, it's all a bit of a mess. Part of the problem was I think originally NHS England thought the GPs could do some of the searches. But this is not at all an easy task and the guidance for GPs to go ahead was retracted. Meanwhile, I think the public are unaware of this issue and likely to be following the letters they have or haven't received unless they have been proactive themselves and looked up the guidance. So if we go to the shielded patient list is a specific subset of patients identified by the chief medical officer. To identify these patients, NHS Digital took the groups identified and converted them into a set of clinical codes and searched for patients with these conditions in the routine and administrative data sets that they hold nationally. They also did a search for patients this week and added around 400,000 more to the original list of 900,000 patients using data automatically pulled from GP systems. 
NHS Digital relies on the quality of data entry by thousands of NHS staff, and so there may be some errors in the data. The list was put together in 48 hours. Specialist doctors and GPs can also add to it. So then about three hours after that article was put out, The Guardian then put out another article. UK government using confidential patient data in coronavirus response. And whether this is related or not, it probably is. Technology firms are processing large volumes of confidential UK patient information in a data mining operation that is part of the government's response to the coronavirus outbreak, according to documents seen by The Guardian. Palantir, the US big data firm founded by the right-wing billionaire Peter Thiel, is working with Faculty, a British artificial intelligence startup, to consolidate government databases and help ministers and officials respond to the pandemic. So straight away, British artificial intelligence startup. So it's a startup. It's not an established company. It's not something that's. Uh, it's not a company that's experienced in doing what it's doing. It's a startup. It's a new company. It's based on these two articles, and based on the letter that I got. It would seem that. I would fit into this category of people that shouldn't have received the letter and it's based on out of date information. So I contacted my GP and I spoke to them at the reception, asked, you know, I've got this letter, I've looked at these, seen these articles in the Guardian over the weekend um, and I was querying whether I should be on this list or not because I've been taking it for granted that it was serious from when I got the letter. It had only been a few days. I'd open the letter on the Thursday or Friday or something. These articles were out on the uh, Sunday. So Monday, Monday morning, first thing, got in touch with my GP. The receptionist looked at my um, file and said there was nothing on there to say that I'd been sent a letter. I asked if there was anything on there to su suggest that I should have been sent a letter or there's some, just anything, any kind of anything relating to this letter. She, she was like, no, absolutely nothing kind of visible that, that springs out. Um, she suggested that she'll forward it all to um, my actual GP, ask them to report back. And if I call back the next day, you know, hopefully she'll have some more information for me. I spoke to them again, and the long and the short of it was was the government have been sending out letters as well as the NHS. And it turns out mine is definitely not from my GP, and it's the government letter. My GP said when they reported back that there is, I should absolutely not be self-isolating or shielding. Um, and that they've removed me from the list. As mentioned in the Garden Guardian article, GPs have the power to add people to the list. But yeah, they also have the power to remove people from the list as well. So thankfully my GP was quite on the case and didn't seem too pleased at the uh, idea of me getting this letter and obviously taking action and stuff. Um, and probably more to the point, found out that it's the government sending out letters and not the GPs. So, there really isn't much to be said about how, kind of, I was a little bit angry about it, of course. I was fuming for a bit. Taking action over three or four days before you find out on four or five days later from the, from the first point that it's like you shouldn't be doing that. And that's quite concerning. So the long and the short of everything is, is if you know anyone who's had these letters and they have not checked out whether they should be on it or not. In other words, if they're ill, then they're probably going to be on it, but if they're really just, you know, there's not much sense in it, make sure they contact their GPs and find out really if they should be on it and get themselves removed off the list. So moving on, as far as I was concerned, by the middle of the week, everything was normal and go back to normality. On Friday the 17th of April, I had a missed call on my phone, saw um, it wasn't from a mobile or something, it was a uh, an 0333 number. Didn't think too much of it. Didn't listen to the voicemail. It's Friday. So just thought, yeah, deal with that Monday. 
So Friday's voicemail message, went to listen to it on the Monday. But on the Monday the 20th, I had another call from the same number. I missed the call. Monday afternoon, I got another one. And so it went on. On the 21st of April, the Tuesday, I had two calls, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. 23rd of April, I had two calls, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And the 24th of April, I got one, and then they gave up. But remember, I was already off this list by this time, allegedly. (laughs) So we just have a little listen to the voice messages that I got. April the 17th at 11.22 from 03333050566. Hi, it's the National Shielding Helpline. We're following on from letters you received to register your food, care and well-being needs. It's really important you register, even if you don't need any support. You can do this by registering online using the link in the letter or by calling 0800 02 That's 0800 02 Please continue to protect yourself by staying at home. Thank you and goodbye. April the 20th. At 9.57, from 0-3-3-3-3-0. Hi, it's the National Shielding Helpline, following from letters that you received to register your food, care and well-being needs. It's really important that you register, even if you don't need any support. You can do this by registering online using the link in the letter, or by calling 0800 228 Please continue to protect yourself by staying at home. Thanks. Bye-bye. April. The 20th at 16.08 from 03-3-3-3-0. This is a message for Mr. Peter. I'm calling from the NHS National Shielding Helpline. Please continue to protect yourself by staying at home. Thank you. April the 21st at 13.55 from 03-3-3-3-3-0. Three. Hello, it's the National Shielding Helpline. Please continue to protect yourself by staying at home. Thank you. April the 21st at 17.57 from 0333. Good evening, my name's Olivia and I'm calling from the National Shielding Helpline. And please do continue to protect yourself by staying at home. Thank you. April the 23rd at 14.57. 41 from 0333. Hello, it's the National Shielding Helpline. Following on from the rest of you received to register your food, care, and well being needs. Please continue. Put yourself back to at home. Thank you. April the 23rd at 1843 from 0333. Hi, it's the National Shielding Helpline. Please continue to protect yourself by staying at home. Thank you. April the 24th at 10.09 from 0333. Hello, Sebastian Shield and Helpline. Please continue to protect yourself by staying at home. Thank you. Bye. To delete this message, 